Hey guys. <clears throat> so today I want to take my flex cut knife that I've got right here, right? And I want to change the handle on it. Um, I don't like these flex cut handles. I don't like the whale tail design. I don't like that little bit in the end. I prefer knives that have a handle shape. I prefer knives that have a handle shape like this ax and ax, ash and ax knife. This ash and ax knife has this really big meaty handle that just fits so nicely in my palm. And so I'd like to make a handle like this for my flex cut knife. So I'm gonna show you how I take this out because the one I wanna do it to most is my detail knife. And I've already taken the detail blade out of the handle. So I'm gonna show you real quick how I took it out of the handle and why I did clean it up. And then I'm gonna make a handle and I'm gonna show you how I attach it. All right, now this process of cutting off the, the handle is a little complicated if you haven't used a bandsaw before. So don't do this if you haven't used a bandsaw, but I am taping up the blade so I don't cut myself. Something to think about. Now, okay, on this, I'm gonna get that bandsaw blade right there next to the handle. The handle is completely on the surface here. And then I try to cut right along where that blade should be. And right behind it as well. And that worked out just perfect. I didn't quite get it all the way through there. So let's see here. Here we go. So I got it real close right there. That might be dulling up my bandsaw blades. So that's something to keep in mind. So I got mostly cut down to where I can free it up a little bit now with a, uh, a knife. Oh. All right, we're back over on the workbench that I got out here. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, Johnny, have you ever done this before? No, no, I haven't. But these are six inches long and they're cut the exact same length. And I want to make, like I said, a handle like this Ash and Axe handle out of it. And that is just wide enough to do so. So I shouldn't have any problems, but we're gonna see. I don't have a uh, bench sand or anything like that to shape this with, so we're probably gonna use a knife. Now, first off, I need to free this up, right? That way I can show you guys how I did that with the first one. And if you notice, there's no grind marks on this, right? I didn't use a grinder to do it. What I did use was an old bench knife, and I just, chip away at that stuff the way I might if I was uh, carving. That's all I did. It's gonna take a while. This Beavercraft knife is not a wood carving knife anymore for me. It is purely a knife that I use for like projects like this, where I would enjoy using the action of a whittling knife for something, but I don't want to hurt one of my wood carving knives. I use this thing for prying, for tearing up, because it is a blade I don't care about anymore. So if you're wondering, oh my God, what are you doing? Yep, this is the knife I can do that with. This is the knife I can do that with. 
Oh, there we go. One piece. Okay, so that is all cleaned up and that's how we get the blade free not too hard and uh, Yeah, all done. I didn't tear up that knife too much. I probably chipped it a bit more But uh, that's all I use this for is like a carpentry knife nowadays It uh, doesn't get used for wood carving anymore. It gets used for silly stuff like that and that worked out now I want to basically create a channel for this blade to go in and being a wood carver, I'm probably going to use my whittling tools to make a channel. And I'll make it to where this blade is straight. Right here. Because if I, if I make it to where the tang is straight in here, the blade's at an angle. I don't know that I want that. I think I want the blade to be straight. So I might put the tang at an angle, like so. And, uh, yeah. So what I'll wind up doing is I'll mark this on here. And I use wood carving tools in the house to create that channel on here. And then I'll match that channel up with the other side. Okay? And then I'll be able to put these together and epoxy them together. And that's how she's going to look once uh, seated in there. Now we got left to do is go ahead and uh, epoxy her up. And then we're going to let her dry and cure for 24 hours. This is just some basic two-ton, two-part epoxy. Brand new, in package. Let's uh, break that open. We'll push a little bit here. That we can mix. Ooh, a secondary piece there to pull out. Didn't even notice that. Okay, I'm gonna put the lid back on and then I'm gonna use this old paint stick to stir. Something I can throw away when we're done here. It's two parts, so you need to make sure both parts get mixed efficiently. A chemical process will occur in this substance that will allow it to chemically dry and cure. Not air dry and cure, chemically dry and cure. That chemical drying occurs whether it's in a vacuum or not. And uh, <coughs> chemical curing that process by which it hardens is significantly just different than air drying, so I want to make sure I specified that. Putting a fan on this isn't going to help it cure faster. It's not going to help it dry faster. That's not the way it works. Okay. Now we're not just attaching the blade here. We are doing the wood itself as well. I may want to need to mix up more of this. We shall see. That done, I'm going to take it outside of the shop, 
to amp it up and let it set for 24 hours. Make sure when you do that to push the blade back down if it gets pushed out, that it's properly seated before it dries completely. And then uh, we'll bring it back inside and we'll get started on shaping the handle. All right, 24 hours later, and this is dried pretty thoroughly. I'm gonna lay this Ash and Axe knife on top of this and mark out a general outline of what I want to get to before I start whittling away at this oak. And this is oak and it's been sitting in the garage for a long time, so it's very dried out and hard. Without a bench grinder, I didn't have a lot of options here for how to get the wood into the right shape. So I started off trying to whittle away at it. Then I realized I did have some die grinding bits for a die grinder. So I took it back off the shop and I die grinded a lot of the wood off and then came back in to whittle things into shape and then sandpaper it down uh, the rest of the way. I used 400 grit sandpaper and then uh, 220 grit sandpaper, just getting it down. And there was a lot of sanding involved, a lot. And I sanded and I sanded and I nearly lost my mind from sanding. In total, I probably spent about two hours sanding on this knife trying to get it right, which is a lot of time to invest in a project that some might think is just a, a silly handle for a knife, but I've grown fond of this blade and uh, I wanted to have a knife handle that I was comfortable with, so I didn't mind investing the time. But uh, your miles may vary. You may not want to invest that much time in doing it. If you have better tools, you'll be able to get it done quicker. But uh, I did not. After sanding it up, I chose to go with Danish oil for uh, the knife. I didn't want to go with boiled linseed oil because though the boiled linseed oil will polymerize, it, uh, it does have a yellowing effect that I don't like. Danish oil will have to be a reapplied, but it is a, a good wood conditioner that's going to be great for a knife. It's not going to create a glossy surface, and it's going to feel good in the hand. So I like the way that Danish oil, uh, the texture of it is, so this is going to work out real well for me. And uh, your miles may vary. All right, we have that all finished up, and it turned out better than I thought it would. All right, so closing thoughts, right? I have the uh, Ash and Axe knife that I have loved for some time because of that handle, which has been perfect. And now my flex cut knife has, has a brand new Leithon Life. Look at that pretty handle, huh? Doesn't look too bad at all. And it worked out pretty well. So yeah, it's not, uh, not the best new knife. But it's a good lease on life for an old knife. And I think I'm going to be very happy with it. I still love that blade. You know, like that blade has uh, done so well for me. And I've learned so much with it. And now I get to have a handle on it that I much prefer. Real beefy. I put some Danish oil on it. And uh, yeah, thinking that uh, I'm going to be quite happy with it. And I went with two different grits of sandpaper, a uh, all the way down to a 220, very fine, right there, 3M. That's what I happen to have here. And then I started with uh, some 100 grit drywall sandpaper. That's what I had in the shop. I am not a woodworker in the traditional sense, so I don't have all the skills and all the tools. I didn't have a belt sander. If, uh, looking back on it, if I had a belt sander, that would have made this a whole lot easier, I think. It would have enabled me to have a, a, <clears throat> more, a more straight line here, because it, you, if you can see this, I don't know if you can tell, it's very warped. It's not perfectly straight, which isn't going to bother me a bit. But if I had a belt sander that could lay it flat on to grind it down, that would have giving me a better, a more flat surface there, but uh, it's not gonna bother me a bit. That's gonna be fantastic. So, I really appreciate you guys watching so far. Thank you very much. If you saw any kind of value in this video whatsoever, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and then uh, watch something else in the channel. Don't forget, if you'd like to, head over to Etsy and uh, check out the stickers I've got for wood carving stickers. You can put them on your tool totes or put them on your water bottles and things like that. And other than that, 
I really appreciate your time. You guys have a great day. Bye.